Dear brothers and sisters, one of the most divisive topics among all Christian denominations is the existence of purgatory. Not all Christians believe in its existence, and today we want to share the extraordinary words of Maria Sima, who, through her mystical experiences, encountered the souls of the departed throughout her life. These souls not only confirmed the existence of purgatory, but also described in great detail what happens to each of us after death. Take a few minutes to watch this video in its entirety, because I am sure many of your questions about the reality of purgatory will be answered. In this video, we will specifically present the words of Maria Sima from the book, Get Us Out of Here. Let's begin this extraordinary journey. Thank you. Now tell me, what exactly is purgatory? Purgatory is a place and a state that every soul experiences when it still needs to atone for and repair the sins committed during its life, before it can reach Jesus in heaven. Today, very little is taught about purgatory, and the resulting ignorance can lead many people to be curious and, being alone and without spiritual guidance, to easily slip into occult practices. It is often said that purgatory is just a state. This is only half true because it is definitely also a place. It is also a time of waiting where souls yearn for God, and this unfulfilled desire is their greatest suffering. All souls, at whatever level they are, experience this. In purgatory, there are three main levels, but I encounter souls who need relatively little to be freed and go to heaven. I am certain of this for two reasons. The first reason comes from an experience I had when I went to a house where strange things were happening at night. I had been called there by the owner who had recently lost his wife. Ready to spend the night in his house to see if I could help, I didn't have to wait long. Loud and noisy thuds and bangs began to be heard in the hallway. To my usual question, what can I do for you? The noise grew even louder, and then suddenly an enormous beast appeared, one I had never seen before, followed by a large snake that quickly devoured it. Then the scene dissolved. I must have been very scared because I was sweating from beginning to end. Later, I described what I had seen to someone experienced in these situations, and she identified the first beast. It was a hippopotamus, a symbol of hardness of heart. This did not mean that the woman was in purgatory in the form of a hippopotamus. It was just a way for me to better understand things. After talking at length with the widower, it gradually emerged that his wife had been hostile towards another woman for about 30 years, despite the other woman wanting to make peace. This refusal to forgive caused her to go to the deepest level of purgatory from which I could not yet free her. The second reason that makes me think I meet souls from the highest level of purgatory is from a book written by a German princess and her priest in the 1920s. This woman encountered the souls from the deepest levels for many years and many of her descriptions are certainly monstrous and much more painful than what I have seen. What other differences might there be between the higher and lower levels of purgatory? In the lower levels, Satan can still attack the souls, which he can no longer do in the higher levels. It is true that we are tested here on earth and that the test ends with our death but the souls in the deepest part of purgatory must suffer for the sins they have committed before they can benefit from our prayers, masses, and good deeds. The continuous attacks of Satan are part of these sufferings. The various levels of purgatory are as different as our illnesses on earth ranging from a simple nail inflammation to diseases that can consume the entire body like fire. 
This fire exists only in the lower levels of purgatory and not in the higher ones. Can our prayers block Satan's attacks on the souls in the lower levels of purgatory? Yes, especially when we ask directly to Saint Michael the Archangel and the lesser angels. Are there many levels in between the main ones? Yes, there are many, because each soul is individually different from another when it arrives there. There are greater and lesser sufferings, and between these extremes, there is every degree of suffering. Probably there are as many levels as there are souls, because no two people, and therefore no two souls, are identical. While souls in purgatory suffer, can they also feel any sense of joy or hope? Yes, no soul ever wants to return to earth because they have a much clearer vision of God than we do. They never want to return to the darkness in which we live here. So does God place the souls there to purify them of their sins that have not yet been atoned for and repaired? No. This incorrect concept is often taught, resulting in people turning away from God. It is not God who places the souls there. The souls themselves judge and place themselves at the appropriate level. They desire to purify themselves before reaching God. It is very important for us to understand this specific truth about God's love for us. So are we the ones who decide that we are not pure and therefore need purgatory? Yes, that's right. Do souls ever rebel against their condition? Are they patient? Or do some not accept the condition they are in? They are patient and want to suffer because they know that through this, they can atone and repair everything. They purify themselves to become completely radiant before God. The more they atone and repair, the more radiant they become. Are the sufferings of purgatory greater than those we experience on earth? Generally speaking, their sufferings are more severe, sometimes much more severe than ours especially in the third and lowest level. Their spiritual suffering is more intense than ours. When I asked a soul what their suffering was like, they answered that it was very particular. They explained it like this. A father who had neglected his work out of laziness, causing his family to suffer, would find himself having to work a lot in purgatory and the resulting sufferings would be stronger than if he had worked on earth. It's important to note, however, that our sufferings in life, even if less rigorous, are worth much more than those in purgatory in terms of atonement. If purgatory is also a place, could it mean that there are specific places on earth where souls spend their time? Yes. It seems that they mostly gather around altars and in the place where they died. A woman from Liechtenstein, I know, has seen them only around the altar. And when they were no longer there, she understood that they had gone to heaven. The souls do not come to me or to us from purgatory, but with purgatory. It is not one place, but many different places. Not one condition, but many different conditions. If purgatory is a vast space, or many different places, then are heaven and hell also places? Yes, my spiritual director had me ask, and the answer was, what many theologians teach today is not correct, saying that heaven, purgatory, and hell are only conditions. All three are also places. How long do souls have to stay in purgatory before they can go to heaven? Oh, it varies greatly. Some souls stay only half an hour, while others remain until the last day. The souls say that the average duration 
is about 40 years. So there will be a last day? Yes. Can the souls in purgatory see and communicate with other nearby souls? They are always aware of the presence of other souls and know they are not alone when many of them act together for something. Maria, can they read? Yes, they read spiritually. I know this because when they come to me, I do not have to read the names or questions I have for them. They simply deduce them from the page. How much do they know about their families? I would say almost everything. They always see us. They hear every word we say about them and know our sufferings. But they do not know our thoughts. They follow their funerals and know who is present to pray for them and who is there just to be seen by others. Do the souls know what is happening in the world? Yes, partly, not everything. They have told me that something very significant is already at the doorstep, just ahead of us. For many years, they said that this thing was near, but since May 1993, they have started using the expression at the door. This event will serve for the conversion of humanity. On other occasions, they have informed me shortly before about less important future events. In the summer of 1954, they spoke to me about the flood that caused a lot of damage in this area. Once they warned me that there were still people alive under the snow after an avalanche. So the rescuers continued their search longer than expected. Two days after my prayers, they were found and saved. It is said that after this life, time no longer exists. However, you state that purgatory is a time when one longs for God. Can you explain this contradiction? It is correct to say that after this life, time no longer exists. However, when we are told that a soul must suffer for a certain period in purgatory, it is only because we are not able to understand the extent of a penalty if it is not expressed in terms of time. The souls can say they must suffer more, that they are not yet free, or that their sufferings have decreased. When they speak of time or indicate the number of holy masses, it is actually to indicate the intensity and amount of their suffering. Do the souls in purgatory have a body like ours, or a, shall we say, spiritual body? They say they do not realize they do not have their physical body. They have a transfigured body that can appear healed and clothed. The souls lament the things they did wrong during their lives. Do they also lament what they did not do at all while on earth? Yes, very much. They regret the missed opportunities to do good for God and others, and can also see the fruits those actions would have borne. When we die, we can no longer do good, and the souls in purgatory can no longer earn merits. It is said that the angels envy us for the good we can do for God, because they cannot perform good deeds for Him, thus earning merits. What happens when a person, despite believing in the existence of purgatory, continues to sin, thinking it won't be that bad? They will regret it very bitterly, much more than someone who commits the same sin while ignoring the existence of purgatory. What is the most profound purpose of your experience? God allowed this experience so that through my apostolate, other people can clearly understand that our life on earth serves only to earn us heaven. The purpose of our life is to be good to one another, and by doing so, to enter into union with God, both now on earth and later in eternity. From this perspective, life becomes increasingly precious for each of us, while the way many people live their lives becomes more and more absurd. 
From this perspective, we understand how immense God's love is and how incredibly beautiful life can become when we work alongside Him. What I see then should and could provide people with a clear and definitive orientation in their path if they wish to be part of the divine will and the beauty that comes from it. In a word, what have you learned over these years from this extraordinary experience? To love God with all my strength. Dear brothers and sisters, I am sure that Maria Sima's words have touched all of you. Let us know in the comments what you think, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss new videos and to become part of the community of faith and prayer. May God bless us all.